Hi, and welcome to another episode of Bespoke Architects Daily Pinup. I'm Nicole Walters, Director of Bespoke Architects, and I'm about to show you what inspiring architectural images made our Pinterest boards today. There was quite a number of things that caught my eye today, not least of all was uh, facades, architectural form and landscape elements played a big role in inspiring images I saw today. I'll start with the top corner. Uh, this one, it was about the laser cut screen on this first floor, but I also really like, I uh, don't know if you can see it in this small image, that's actually a garage door. And so the interplay, I mean, the color of that mesh screen is very similar to the timber color down below and then the use of concrete. But I just, I really liked it for the screen, but overall the composition of that, uh, the form of that building and then the way the materials link together is really, really nice. So that's why that one made the board. I have pinned this style of building a lot where we sort of do those cantilevered eaves and the cantilevered floors. It's just a really nice sort of C shape. I quite like the asymmetry uh, to this particular design and the lightness that we get by the, we can see the white structural column inside that window line, but the sort of the frameless glass wrapping that corner is really, really lovely. I quite liked this uh, design here. It was really interesting with the burnt timber facade playing off the raw timber uh, windows and doors. I quite liked the way these giant doors pivoted as well. Uh, in Australia, the way those doors are pivoting over that void would not uh, be allowed under the BCA. Uh, but as a form, as a shape, and as a material palette, I really liked it. Uh, this little project here uh, really caught my eye today. This was the image that grabbed my attention. I liked that curved wall to the courtyard that we can see here and the overall material palette, the way that the first floor cantilevers above with this sort of little mezzanine section, the way the material cantilevers above that but is open. It's just a really nice, again, composition of material and form. And then when we deep dive into it, this is, that, this is a vertical garden that we can see through that car sort of entry area, which is just here in this image. So I really liked that. And even the colors, the purples and the greens, I pinned them yesterday, I've pinned them again today. They're a really nice color combination in the gardens that we're seeing. Uh, this is looking down into this curved courtyard section and we can see it's a small alfresco area. It is paved, the, there's a continuity there of the material of the hardscaping going across that wall area. But we can also see a small area of lawn where they've placed their chairs and this beautiful chiminea uh, style open fireplace that's against that boundary wall. Even their up lighting is really nice as I'm looking at this image now. So a really nice and interesting courtyard. It does feel awfully private from the outside. We can see the car parking there and the up lighting is really nice as well. And then finally from that project, just an inside shot of that upstairs mezzanine level where we see uh, this particular person standing and the way that staircase is working. It was just a really nice building overall. It had some really strong elements externally in terms of material and form. So that's why it's made the board today. The House of Cracks was just a really nice, again, courtyard. We're obviously looking at this in autumn time with a deciduous tree, but the use of material, the fact that the garden bed is raised for that tree just works really well with the internal floor levels that we can see there. And then this opening space in that solid wall above is just really, really lovely. And then internally, it was this joinery piece here. It looks like a study space, but the fact that they've gone for a concrete bench top, which we know is a favorite material of mine and particularly durable, and then softened it as we've discussed in other episodes with the timber sort of joinery below that bench. And then you're sitting at the desk looking at the view. We are doing a project uh, that's currently under construction here in Geelong that it has a very similar style of study with a desk under a window. Uh, and I really like that as an option there. Uh, the Love 2 house, this was the image that caught my eye and what I particularly liked about it was the fact that this sliding door just sort of slid past the facade of the building and we can see the track sort of hanging out here with the door open so that was really lovely. Here is a close-up shot inside and we can see that it's actually concrete behind this metal uh, circular shape and at the top of this obelisk, uh, let's call it, is a skylight that has a um, a divider in it uh, between two spaces, I'm guessing. So that's one viewer to 
of it there and then another view below. So I just really enjoyed that as a sort of a skylight shape and then again the way the door is working and then the material palette as well. The K Kurt residence caught my eye for the car parking. This is it here. We can see the screening with sort of planter boxes above and then we see the full form of the house cantilevering over this end of that image. And here is that same residence from the, um, the private sector side or the private space side of that property. So we're in their backyard, let's call it. Um, and we can see that it's actually just a carport and they're parking underneath an alfresco um, sort of space upstairs on that balcony. So it's open to their yard where they park their cars and their motorbikes. And then above that is an outdoor living zone. So it's just a really interesting way to park cars where the purpose of parking cars isn't obvious from the street and um, is really well integrated, I guess you'd say, into the overall form and function of that building. Elaine Square caught my eye. It's a beautiful water feature. I think it was this image here that caught my eye with the stepping stones this morning and the reflectiveness of those ponds around it. Here is an aerial view of that same piece of landscaping. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of landscape architecture. We can see the really strong shape of that water feature, these different height stepping stones working their way through, and then the, the certain different garden beds and even a fire feature in there so that was beautiful and then part of that same project did have a beautiful vertical garden on the other side of that screen so we can see that here in that image this is the screen here here it is on this side of this image and this side of this image we've got like a pergola structure spanning across the, the void into this uh, landscape wall a uh, vertical wall garden which is here on this aerial image so it was just a really beautiful well thought out piece of landscape architecture and a really interesting way to do a courtyard so that's why that one is on the board uh, the solid house just had some really nice architectural elements inside I really liked this shower here. We can see the shower niche, which I'm, as I've stated before, not a big fan of, but I do like the fact that it's working with those tile patterns. Uh, but what particularly caught my eye about this shower, aside from the fact that we're using the same material on the floor and the walls, is the giant skylight above it. I thought that was just stunning. From that same project, they had some beautiful built-in joinery. We can see here their dining room table, which has, it's just an exquisite dining room table in and of itself with some loose chairs on this side of the room. It does have three legs under that table. It is quite long. And then we've got some booth seating that's wrapping around it in an L shape. I just felt that was a really nice a way to integrate dining into the corner of the room so we don't have the dining table sitting dead center of the space. It's off to one side. It does allow um, more opportunity to do different things in that room. So I quite liked that and that's why that has made the board. And then from that same project, their kitchen. I really liked the color palette uh, so that we've sort of got that nice marble look uh, similar to the tile in the shower sort of island bench and then this matte black kitchen behind it with the window relief. Thank goodness they put that in there. It would have just been really dark. What I'm not so keen on is how small that space feels because it does have a black ceiling. So that room does feel awfully low. Um, and I think that is to, oh, I believe that's due to the color of the ceiling. So if that ceiling had have been painted white, I don't think we would quite have that same impact of feeling so perhaps quite so boxed in. Uh, and from that same project, this image here where we've sort of got a sunken lounge, we can see some giant concrete treads uh, on this side of the image that tie in nicely with the actual feature stair back here. And then the, the joinery, which is a contrasting color between the floor and the timber ceiling is actually sitting up at that higher level. So we've got this really solid sort of concrete uh, balustrade I guess we will say on the bottom part of that image and I'm assuming there's a TV uh, behind there uh, behind those tall cupboards so that was just a really interesting way to do a joinery unit and to do a split level in a house often you know we'll do the split level quite close together and then we'll do a contrasting stair and this is more of an elongated uh, way of doing that and it's all in the same polished concrete floor finish and here it is from the other end. So now we're standing up at this feature stair that we can see at the back image, looking back into that lounge room, we can catch the back of this booth seating 
uh, in the very back corner of the image and we're looking down these really long treads here. So it, it works quite well. It's got an interesting material palettes of the blacks and the timbers and the whites and I feel they all work really well. I would just question the choice over the black ceiling in that kitchen um, and the impact that that's having on the feeling of volume. Um, so that would be my comment there. This little project, uh, Modo Pento, it was the textures and the colors that caught my eye. The mosaic tile that we're seeing on the wall, again, we're seeing used on the floor, but this does stop at a dado height. It's not going uh, full height in the bathroom. It is stopping here at the vanity height. So I quite liked that. And I did like this uh, towel rail or hand towel rail that they had. We can see the towel ladder here, but closer back to the basin, we can see uh, the towel, hand towel rail. And they're also interestingly using a mix of metal finishes. So we can see chromes and brass and chrome. Uh, but I did like their mirror with the uh, light in it as well. Um, from that same project, we have a study space. Unlike this study space up here, which felt really open with that monolithic desk, quite long. I mean, it's a huge expanse of a study. You'd comfortably, I think it's probably bigger than my whole office, actually, that area. Uh, you'd sit quite a number of people at it. It does feel very open, particularly with the windows. And then I guess the counter uh, design to that would be something like this, where it's a, it's the sort of the booth is created. It it feels top heavy in that it's disconnected from the floor. It only has these fine little legs. I would again suggest maybe that that shelf is too close to the top of that computer. Uh, just from a visual perspective, that probably has no impact on the function of that uh, desktop, but it just feels maybe a little bit too close together. But again, a really nice color palette for joinery and something a little different, which is what you know, you're always looking for for inspiration on Pinterest. And then again, that same material palette was used in the bedroom to create this joinery unit that I quite liked that then wraps around and becomes the bed head. So quite an interesting piece of joinery in that bedroom. Again, uh, it looks like drawers underneath an open shelf and some storage and a mirror here. So it's something a bit different. Uh, and finally, oh, and sorry, I should mention this one down here was their kitchen. And that did catch my eye with the aquas. I mean, we can see it throwing back to the bathroom color palette, the floor in the study area, even the back uh, heading board to that bed is quite lovely. So there is a strong uh, reference to green and timber in this project. Uh, it's a really nice, interesting way to keep your cookbooks up here in the overhead. And then we have this overhead shelf up here. And then the break in the joinery, it's got quite a strong color line to bench height and then it changes material. So just a really nice, interesting kitchen. Finally, to end with, I saw this and just, to me, it looks like a stunning uh, table. I just really, just as an object, as a shape, it's just divine, it's soft, it feels very fluid. I quite like that as an object for a house, as an interior. So I think that's just beautiful. Um, and that's all the inspiring things we have to close out our week here at Bespoke Architects. I hope you found some inspiration uh, to um, cheer you up for today and get you thinking about whatever project it is that you have going at the moment or might like to get started in the future. If you are looking for more inspiration, we do have the daily pinup uh, on Pinterest itself. We have some episodes, some of the shorter ones. If you're looking for some longer inspiration, please head over to our YouTube page where you'll find uh, all the episodes of Bespoke Architects Daily Pinup. The links are in these uh, older videos. Thanks so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you on the other side of the weekend. Stay safe. Bye.